Welcome to Providence Academy for season opener football here from the new Skyway District. It is the Breck Mustangs taking on the Providence Academy Lions here this evening. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox. Joe Basil will join me for the call of tonight's contest here as these teams kick off the 2023 season. If you look just on paper in terms of number of players and if you look at size, you say might be a tall order for Breck this evening. But uh, Providence certainly has got good numbers, and they are looking to have a good season after winning seven games a year ago. And uh, Breck, a little bit under 30 in terms of guys dressed tonight for varsity, but they've always kind of been able to put together a decent program on the field and throw the ball around a little bit. They might be a little bit outmatched uh, on the front line, but they do have some experience on their line, so they have guys who know what to do a little bit, even if they're giving up a little bit of size, so they're hoping to come in and, and make a good showing here on the road this evening. 17-6 Providence was the result a year ago when these teams faced off, and uh, we'll see what develops here in this uh, season opener tonight. Very hot night tonight, too, which is another case where the team with a little more depth, a little more numbers uh, might be favored in, in that regard as well. As we're uh, near 90 degrees here at game time, there is a, a breeze which is going to help cool it off a little bit, but it's enough of a breeze that it might impact the throwing game of Breck in particular a little bit here tonight as well. Let's take a look at key players to watch for in this evening's game. One of those uh, returners for Breck that uh, coming off a good season and he had a pretty good night against Providence last year as well. Nate Miller will play at a linebacker and a receiver for them. We've given you the offensive stats for Nate from a year ago there as he had uh, 40 catches and also kind of a big playmaker on the defensive side of the football for Breck as well. And they'll be pretty much going uh, two-way starters uh, all across the board for the Mustangs with those uh, low numbers. And for Providence Academy, a young guy that a lot of college coaches are salivating over. We were not too sure we were gonna get to see him here tonight, but junior Abu Tarawali coming back off an injury got cleared yesterday. He's not gonna play uh, as much as he normally will, and he's probably only going to play defense here, it sounds like tonight, but uh, he is a big, talented junior. Uh, programs like Penn State and Iowa State and Minnesota are very interested in him, and uh, he, he's primed for a very good season here. Again, we may not see as much of him uh, tonight as uh, what we're going to see down the line, but uh, hopefully he gets an opportunity to kind of get his feet wet here for this season opener. Stay tuned. We'll have the kickoff for you in a moment. It is the Mustangs of Brack visiting the Providence Academy Lions up next here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. And welcome back here to Providence Academy. We're hopeful that the weather is cooling down a little bit as we get to this seven o'clock kickoff. It feels like it up here, but on the field might be a little bit different. Those guys will be out there running around and uh, heating up right away. Nate Miller and Drew, Bur or excuse me, Nick Bernie waiting back deep for Breck as they will get the football first. Mustangs are in white. And Providence will kick off here to begin this season. Uh, Grant Heim is their kickoff man. It is going to be interesting to see uh, as Joe Basil joins me now, you know, just how much the wind does affect the kicking game and the throwing game. It's, it's not gale force by any means, but it might be enough to play a little bit of havoc. Yeah, exactly. And it usually does. And, and it looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, Providence has taken the wind. And Coach Rooney told me that both of his kickers have pretty explosive legs, Jay. So uh, we'll get to test that out early. Yeah, it's not always the first thing that comes to your mind, but boy, a kicking game can be very important when you're talking field position and and uh, you know limiting returns if you're able to knock this one through the end zone. Or yeah, it's huge. 
a lot of coaches will pay lip service to special teams and then just not coach it up. But uh, you can uh, you can win or lose a game on a on a punt block or uh, anything anything related to special teams. It's it's important. Heim gets to go ahead and he will put his foot to it. We are underway in the 2023 season for Bracken Providence. Miller drifts over to take it at the three yard line, cutting up the middle and he'll be stopped a little bit short of the 20 at about the 18 and Breck will have first possession. Their head coach Marcus Harris have known Marcus for a very long time since he was a high school player himself at Brooklyn Center. Hank Langer senior will be his starting quarterback getting his first uh, varsity reps at that position, so they're they're hopeful that he's got, you know going to come out and and uh, most of all take care of the football, make good decisions, and uh, you know asking Marcus what what do you have to do tonight? And he said first and foremost just not beat ourselves, not have penalties, not give the football away, and uh, you know kind of go from there. Coming out in a bunch formation. Bernie is wrapped up and dropped hard. Nick Toma, one of the key returners for the Lions this year, 6'2 and 2'15 at a defensive end, and he is able to get through and make the stop there for a loss of about three or four. Yeah, Coach Rooney talked about Toma. He, 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 when I spoke to him last night, he talks about him as a speed rusher also in passing situations, Jay. So it will be second down and 13 as you get a look at the starters for both these teams here. Langer looking over the middle into traffic, almost picked off as Luke Trader got his hands on that one. There was all kinds of traffic around as he tried to thread that one through to Jojo Naya and it falls incomplete and exactly what Breck didn't want now, third and long. Right. Yeah, Breck's fortunate there, triple coverage, really. Uh, yeah, he had a lot the of time team. there, but just not a lot of room to sneak that one in. And and Trader, I'm sure, is, you know, he was starting to make a play toward the receiver there, and the ball, I think, kind of surprised him because it pretty much hit him in the hands. Yeah, and sometimes on those tip drills, that's where you get some interceptions too, Jay. So third and 13 for Breck, opening possession of the night. Rush coming, he drops it off, complete to Naya, but not a lot of room to run, and that'll only get him a couple of yards. As good pursuit up there to make the stop was Romeo Sweet for Providence, and that will bring up a fourth and about 10, so give him a couple of yards, three yards on the completion, but not nearly enough. As you see, he was under pressure there from, uh, as you mentioned, speed rusher Nick Toma there. Yeah, I don't mind the call, uh, you know, you know probably Providence is going to be coming out of their cleats on third and long, but uh, Providence kind of smelled that one out. Colin Mitchell will be the punter for Breck. Anthony Fonlander waiting back just on his side of midfield here. And we're going to get a flag, it looks like, against Providence, but it will not be nearly enough to get uh, Breck a first down, of course, as they get... Five yard mark off against the Lions, just a little over eager up front. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see tonight too, Jay, about how many procedural penalties we do get since it's game one. Sometimes you gotta work the kinks out a little bit and game one is usually when that happens. So fourth and five gives uh, their punter, Mitchell, a little bit more breathing room if nothing else here, but. Punter's not terribly deep, Jay. Usually you're about 14 yards, but. Uh, they get it off though. Left footer, not a very long kick here. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. Ooh, Providence uh, got a little closer to having that ball hit them than their coaches would like, I'm sure, as Trader was in the vicinity. And I don't think he knew where the ball was. And it will be spotted right at midfield. So uh, I think the plan worked to perfection for Providence. We'll kick off with the wind at our back. There's Charlie Willingantz. Uh, uh, receiver for this team a year ago and has stepped in as their starting quarterback this year. A big, uh, rangy guy. He's got good size at about 6'5 and uh, can run the ball a little bit too, Coach was saying. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, see, see what uh, they have in store for him. They, you know, might have a little more vanilla look tonight in their first night than uh, what you're going to see down the line from them too. 
A little bit of jet sweep action there, a nice game. Solomon Martin on the run. He's a newcomer to their program, moved in from, I believe they said Michigan. And uh, he will pick up about five on the play. Yeah, good first call just to, just to see what kind of uh, speed Breck can, can provide from uh, east to west there. Nice gain on first down. Go with the handoff up the middle, and that is Colin Sapu on the run there for the Lions. He'll be stopped a couple yards short of the first down. A second leading rusher for their team a year ago, so he's got pretty good experience. He's a junior. This is what you like to see too, Jay's third and short. Particularly uh, particularly first out of the blocks with, uh, with your new quarterback. Give him a little confidence, move the chains. And a turn and handoff again to Sapu, and pretty well defended. Brack will stack it up short. As he did not even get back to the line of scrimmage there. The loss on the play. So Breck, they were, you know, kind of quietly confident in the defense they can put out there. They're not, you know, maybe the biggest group around, but uh, they've got a, got a lot of guys who can flow to the ball and have played quite a bit on defense. And a lot of times defense can be a little bit ahead of the offense this time of year as well, Jay. So it looks like uh, Providence is going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, and this spot on the field, fourth down and four here for the Lions. I think this is a relatively easy call to make here from this field position. Willingance rolling left and going to run it, and he will not get there. Brock coming up with a big stop. Host of Mustangs there. I think Will Knutson was first on the hit and really no gain on that play. Kind of gave it away early what that was going to be. Basically yeah. just a quarterback sweep and hope that they could get enough blocks, but Breck flowed to the football, and yeah, Knutson did a good job getting in there. He was fighting off a block and just got low enough and got him to, got him to the ground, so Breck has to feel good about that after they had to punt the ball away and gave it to Providence at midfield. Yeah, they picked up a little bit in the field position game too as well, Jay. Yeah, Knutson definitely was there first, and then his friends joined him. Handoff to Bernie, and he took a pretty good pop and is driven back. Not much of a gain there, if anything. And stop made for the Lions by Grant Sandell. Providence is kind of a junior-laden team this year uh, in talking to Coach Rooney. And uh, pretty, pretty excited about the fact that uh, they got a, lo a lot of juniors. They're playing a lot of juniors this year. They will call it a gain of one there, so second and nine coming up for Breck. Certainly throwing the ball around is, is their, you know, number one goal, but also they want to be able to run it enough to kind of keep them honest. Oh, that's right. Langer will throw it down the sideline. Ooh, quite a grab. Yep, there's a flag. As C.J. Roberts had his jersey tugged on pretty good there. And that is going to be defensive pass interference against the Lions. Yeah, I think Luke Trader had a little bit too much cloth on that one, Jay. And uh, Yeah, it wasn't particularly subtle. I mean, we could all <laughs> see it from up here. Right, right. Yeah, and that linesman's right there to make that call. So that'll be a first down for Breck. Good idea by Breck to stretch the field a little bit with, uh, with their receivers. Coach Harris was fairly high on his receivers, actually, in, in talking to him. Boy, and the, the unfortunate thing, if your Providence there was, they had pretty good coverage. I don't think it was really necessary for him to grab like that, but he did. Langer, rolling left, still looking, now going to tuck it and try and get what he can out of it. He'll pick up about three as he took a pretty good pop there. Langer, a decent-sized guy, though. He's a uh, you know, linebacker as well. and. Right, that's a combination you don't always see, Jay. Quarterback, linebacker, that's kind of old school. Yeah, and, uh, I was talking to Coach Harris about that, and he said, you know, with our numbers, we've got to, I mean, it, you don't really have the luxury to just say your quarterback's going to be a quarterback only. Right. Yeah, exactly when, uh, when you have the, the numbers on the roster that they have going for them. 
I like the fact, though, that he just ran the ball and didn't try to force it. And that one's tipped and intercepted. You mentioned it earlier. And there's Romeo Sweet on the return. Then there's going to be a penalty on Brack on the tackle, a face mask. So the interception should stand. Yeah, there's the old tip drill, Jay. Yeah, like, as you said, we alluded to earlier. I think I did see a face mask. Yeah. So not only will they get the pick, they'll also get some more yardage out of it on the, the face mask on the tackle. Yeah, that's tough on a on a quarterback. The receiver gets their hands on it, but yet, uh, you know, can't reel it in. Yeah, there we go. They're going the right direction now. Going to be a five-yard face mask. So it will be Lions football at the 45 after the interception on the tip drill by Romeo Sweet, the junior. Another look at it here as Langer's throw. It looking for Miller there, and it went off his hands. And then there you see a little bit of a face mask there on the return. Providence so showing a little pistol and then a little side-by-side. Will and Gantz getting his second opportunity here. Play action, looking deep downfield. He's got a man, but he overshoots him. So you look for Max Clausen, who was wide open. Brack really bit on that play fake. And boy, the, <laughs> the Providence coaches, when they look at the film, they say, oh, we had the right call there. It just didn't quite get executed. Yeah, they, re they really did. And uh, again, you know, early in the game like this, quarterback maybe geeked up a little bit. He really juiced it. And well, they may, you know, wouldn't be surprised if uh, they don't come back to that one, Jay. Oh, well, and I was going to say, too, it puts a little fear in the Breck safeties as well. That they, I think they realize they really dodged one there. So yep. puts that thought in your mind, even though it wasn't complete. And well defended there on the handoff right side to Peyton Bartz as he was tripped up. Looks like he'll be... A little short of the line of scrimmage. In fact, a loss of one. You know, the one thing I'm going to be interesting to be interested to watch as the game goes along, Jay, is uh, Providence's O line is relatively young. They they start two sophomores and three juniors, and so far uh, it seems like Breck has been able to take advantage of that, and they're running from sideline to sideline making tackles. Third and eleven. Keep in mind, Terawali seeing action just on defense tonight, not on offense, where he. Chance to be a pretty big force as well. Willingham's throwing deep down the sideline. This time it is complete. Solomon Martin hauling it in. He got turned around a little bit, but the uh, defender there, Ethan Pastor, didn't see the ball coming and dropped in there nicely for the long completion down to, let's see where they'll spot this, the 25-yard line. Yeah, and I think it shows some real confidence in Coach Rooney with with Charlie Willingham's coming, you know, coming back to the deep ball, some, which will do nothing but help his confidence. First and 10 on the 25 here for the Lions. Uh-oh, somebody went the wrong way there. Willingham's going to throw it, and it is complete. I don't think that was what they had in mind on that play. It looked like it was going to be a handoff, but Max Clausen is open, and I'm going to have to say probably pretty good discipline by the line to not go downfield there as well. Right. And Willingham's, you know, doing a pretty nice job of extending this play and finding the open guy. Definitely he was, he was being chased out of the pocket. Yeah, nice gain for Providence. Going to be first down goal to go here as they are inside the 10-yard line. So Willingham's now two out of three as he... Missed on the long one, but then found Martin on a 30-yarder, and that one went for 15 to Clawson. Two by two by Providence here in the receiver end. Oh. Again, it looks like somebody went the wrong way. Willingant's being chased. Hit as he throws, and a battle for the football incomplete. Nice job defensively there to jump in and nearly get that one by Muath Muhammad, who had six interceptions a year ago. Right, and I think this is probably one that Willinghans, you know, may have, might have been better just to throw the ball out of bounds because, as you, as you said, the Breck player was right there. 
So it'll be second down goal to go here for the Lions. 4.27 to go, first quarter. No score on the board, but Providence trying to change that after a couple of nice pass completions get them down in uh, sight of the goal line. Going to run option left. The pitch back to Sapu. He has to avoid a tackler, and he does. Gets a good block out there, but good pursuit. They're able to stay with him and get him out of bounds after a pickup of a couple. Yeah, a little bit of option football by Providence there. Kind of a kind of a different wrinkle that we haven't seen tonight. And uh, you know, so far, Jay, I've been impressed with Willingham's uh, uh, maturity. As you, as you said, he's been a receiver for three years, but he's shown some nice poise out there. So third down and goal. I thought Breck did a pretty good job of defending that one, even though they maybe weren't expecting it. Right. Yeah, they run east-west pretty well, Breck. Third and eight. Willingham's looking and incomplete. Martin asking for a flag. They kind of bump shoulder to shoulder, and I, I think I mean, at first glance, I'm okay with that being a no call there. They were both going for the ball. I agree with you, Jay. I watched it all the way, and... Uh, yeah, just kind of, you know, both of them have the right for the ball. And, of course, the receiver is going <laughs> to want the call. But, uh, yeah. Max nice. Benago coming on to attempt the extra, or, excuse me, field goal for Providence here. And he doesn't look like a kicker. I was watching him on the sideline. He was 6'6 and 230. And this will be a 25-yard attempt here to try and get Providence on the scoreboard. Oh, we're going to have a flag, though. Looks like it'll be against the Lions. Illegal substitution. So that'll cost them five. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bit longer, but as yeah. you said, he's got the leg that it shouldn't make it uh, unreachable. I think both the kickers, uh, according to Coach Rooney, both the kickers for Providence are soccer players, both with pretty explosive legs. So now a 30-yard attempt, and it is blocked. Getting a piece of it for Breck. Looked like it was Dylan Lubke coming in to get the hand up. So Providence getting into good position at a first and goal, but they're unable to get points out of it as the uh, field goal attempt is blocked. Yeah, ni nice job by Breck. And their defense so far tonight, uh, bend but don't break kind of a defense in that, in that situation. Well, they kind of overloaded the, you know, their left side defensively there. Miller was on the edge and then inside next to him. You see both guys nearly getting there, and it was uh, Lubke, 52, that got his hand, right hand on that one and swatted it. Yeah, they did have them outnumbered, didn't they? It was Lubke and Miller coming off, that in, off, off the edge. So first and 10 from the 20 for Breck as they get the ball back. They bend but don't break on that one defensively. Langer rolling left and is going to run it. And nice pursuit to get out there and wrap him up there for Providence by Grant Sandell. And it'll be a loss of a yard on the play. Yeah, the one thing, the one thing so far about Langer that, that I like as a former quarterback coach is you know, he, uh, on that one, he kept it and uh, you know, didn't try to force anything which can really get you in trouble. Yeah, and I thought he was decisive, too. I mean, yes, he did not outrun the guy, but at least he, I thought, made the correct decision there. Yeah, he made the call. Right, he made the call he was going to run right away. Bernie taking the handoff here. They get a little positive push on that left side out to about the 24. And let's see, do we have a flag here? No, oh, don't. Just a helmet coming off. Yeah, one of their best runs inside tonight, Jay. Picked up some positive yardage, as you said. So third down and long here for Brack after the first down loss and then a four-yard pickup there by Bernie. Breck coming out with trips to the near side here, Jay. Langer's going to look the other way with it, and he fires complete for the first down. 
Boy, they, they uh, overloaded the one side and then coming back to that weak side and Jojo Naya had one on one and he easily won that battle. They sure did. And that's exactly, you know, by formation, they were able to, uh, you know, kind of out Fox Providence a little bit on that. And, and uh, quarterback delivered. First down at the 38. And that was the one thing Coach Colin Rooney talked about with Providence. He said, we know that they have a pretty sophisticated, that Breck has a pretty sophisticated passing game. They always have to kind of worry about that. They can catch you. Oh, rush coming. Langer steps up. And he'll be dropped just short of the line of scrimmage here by Peyton Bartz. The outside rush from Toma forced him to step up. And he, I guess, did a good job really to get as much as he did, which was back to about a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he had just a moment or two to, to uh, keep his eyes downfield on that with Jay. And then that speed rusher Toma that we talked about earlier, you know, closed the gap. I'm thinking at some point already in this first half, Rex saying, how about we get a body on number nine? He's been in our backfield more than we would <laughs> like so far here. Yeah, he's kind of their Joey Bosa, I think, uh, se seemingly. Here's a lateral, and they're going to have to dive on it as o Oliver Cadu. That was a clearly backward pass, so he has to go recover it, and that's where the ball will be. That does not help Rex cause for sure, all the way back to the 23. And that's unfortunate too, Jay, because they actually had the swing, you know, kind of set up, but... Uh, as you said, it's a backward pass. A lot of times the swing is open, the check down's open. There's an old saying in football, check downs equal first downs. But uh, he threw a backward pass and you gotta cover that. Heads up play by Cadu to just get on that one. At that point, you don't wanna be trying to scoop it up and go anywhere. However, a loss of 14 is not what your offense needs here. They no. got third down and a very long distance to go here. They need to get all the way out to just shy of midfield of the 48. And this will be a timeout taken here by Breck. This is one of those situations where, yeah, you'd like to get the first down, but I think you're probably thinking more of let's get something. Maybe you can break one a little bit, but you're not trying to throw a home run here. No, exactly. Third and not many plays in the, in the playbook for third and 25, Jay. And uh, as you said, maybe you just hand it off, maybe a little little draw action, possible screen here. But uh, uh, yeah, not, not a lot available to you at third and 25. Sometimes quarterbacks will try too hard to make it complicated. He said, I want these swing passes to be a long handoff. It doesn't need to be perfect. Right. Doesn't need to, you know, get him way out in stride or anything. I just want him to get the ball to, in the guy's hands as quickly as you can to let him be a runner. And, and it, yeah, and that's all they have to be. As I said, just a little, just a little check down. A lot of times, they, like I said, the linebacker's not in a great spot, and you've got some space to work with. See if they'll come after Langer here or kind of play coverage and force a punt. Langer throwing. Got the completion to Roberts. Obviously way short of the first down, but they at least picked up seven or eight. And that's kind of what I was talking about. That, I think, was more important than trying, you know, really hard to get the first down there. I mean, again, you, you give your guy a chance to break a tackle, but... Yeah, and, and any kind of a gain like this gets you a little away from the shadow of your own end zone and... Hopefully good snap and punt here. Quinn Lacombe on the nice stop there for Providence, which is all you're looking for out of your guy there. And you, you know, I don't want to say you concede the catch, but you, you're making the sure tackle is the most important thing there. Right, no run after the catch. Colin Mitchell on to punt. Pondlander waiting back deep. This time a little better punt and yeah, a little more hang time. Gonna be not returnable for Fondlander. They'll down it at the 34. So about a 35-yard kick there for Mitchell on his second opportunity. And now Providence will get the football back lead in this first quarter, 19 seconds to go. They marched it down the field and certainly looked like they might take the lead the last time they had the ball, but it didn't pan out, ended up getting a field goal blocked. Yeah, they had a little rhythm going, I thought, you know, last time. And um, 
So far, Breck's defense has held up. As we said, the Ben don't, don't break school of defense. We'll see what Willinghans can do this time. Well, and I think the fact that they have held up against the run pretty well, too, has probably been a good thing, you know, for their, they've not been overrun up front. Here's the throw into traffic, and let's see. Yes, it looks like it was held onto there in a nice grab by Clawson. It was a very, it was a very nice catch in traffic right there, Jay. Uh, defender close. Sometimes the slant is one of the toughest, toughest routes to throw. Nice job by Clawson. And they're going to let the quarter wind down. So we will reach the end of one here at Providence Academy. And Breck hanging in there. They are tied up at 0-0 with the Lions here. One quarter down, three to go here. We'll be right back. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And welcome back to the beautiful campus here at Providence Academy. Some addition going on to the building here as well on the uh, north end of the building. And 0-0 our score here. Providence football to begin our second quarter is now the field entirely in shadow here. The 7 o'clock kickoff tonight on the season opener, September 1st. September is already here. It's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, no, I'm, I'm disappointed we're done with August. But... When you're a high school football fan, you're kind of excited that September's oh, here too. Very excited. I was I was excited all day to you know to come out here and call this game. So excited. Second and six here for Providence as we change ends here. Willingans looking to throw. Now he's gonna tuck it and he is wrapped up as Knutson got to him just short of the line of scrimmage so that I guess will officially go as a sack. Yeah, not uh, not not terrible pass pro, but uh, probably more of a coverage sack, I think, than anything on yeah, that one, Jay. I, I agree, and I think it was smart that he didn't go where he was looking, too, because there wasn't really a lot of room to get that one in there. Right. So a third down situation. Almost got an early start there. Here's the throw for Martin. He's got it. Defender missed on the pick try. And then Mitchell able to make the tackle. Solomon Martin did a good job of coming back to meet that one. It looked like for a moment the defender might have a good opportunity at that one. Yeah, Willinghans, Willinghans loves to go to, uh, well, Clausen and Martin, favorite receivers. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's the good and the bad of, of trying to go for the interception, isn't it? And uh, gives up a pretty big gainer. And Mitchell did a good job helping his teammate out the safety there. If he doesn't make that tackle, that one might go to the house. I thought it might. I actually thought it might. So Lions football at the Breck 40 now. They're going to go to the ground. Sapu takes the handoff, breaks through a tackle, and that was probably their most impressive run so far. So he'll pick up seven or eight on that carry here. And I know they felt like... Even though their line is young, that they, you know, size-wise, that they might be able to move Breck around a little bit. Right, yeah, definitely the best run of the evening, especially on, a, you know, kind of an inside zone run. Sapu really, uh, really gouging them there at that time. And sometimes, you know, early in a game, the run doesn't work as much, but you still keep with it, wear the defense down, especially on a hot night. Yeah, you definitely don't give up on it. Now they're going into a pistol situation. Ooh, Willingans bobbled the snap, so he's just going to take off and run. And he'll gain a little bit, but not enough for the first down. As I think he was kind of eyeing the defense a little bit. You'll see he just doesn't come up with a clean catch. It might have been a little bit of a low snap, too. I think it was, yeah. I think just momentarily Willingans took his eye off of it and, uh, you know, 
We saw what happened. We did see on that last play what uh, Coach Rooney said we might see some of, you know, the motion burgled into the backfield, uh, kind of an offset eye look to have him as a lead blocker, but it didn't, didn't turn out that way because of the bobble. But still a positive gainer there, and it leaves him with third and short. Providence with trips to the near side, so we got one on one on the other side. Quarterback and this keep. Is straight quarterback run, and Willingham's showing his size and strength there as he will easily pick up the first down, gain six. Boy, some nice, some nice leg strength by Willingham's on that one, Jay. Yeah, because he was met uh, for a short gain and then just kept carrying tacklers. And sometimes it's a, about formation too, where you just you outnumber them a little bit there. I don't think that was necessarily what. Breck was expecting to see on that play based on the, the formation. So first and 10 from the 26 now for Providence as they try and get on the board here in a 0-0 game. Willingham's throwing it deep for Martin and let's see, does he have it? No. Beautiful ball, just a little bit out of bounds. Not bad coverage. No, that's Muhammad back yeah. there. And I think yeah. Muhammad actually, at, when all was said and done, he had the ball in his hands at the end too, but neither one of them were in bounds. So. And I've been, pre been impressed with Muhammad, Jay. He's only a 10th grader. Yeah, and he had, as I mentioned, six picks last year. As a ninth as a, grader. As a freshman, yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a small guy, but he moves his feet very well. And we'll look at this opportunity here. and Good battle for the football. Yeah, he was clearly out there. Yeah, and I think Martin maybe did come down with the catch, but he was not in the field of play anymore. Willingatz throwing the other way, this time complete. Fonlander the catch, and looks like he might have enough for the first down, down to around the 15. Yep, that'll be a gain of uh, 10 and a half or 11 and give them the first down. Yeah, give it, you know, it's the old take what the defense is giving you, Jay. Defense playing way off in a cover three situation. And a uh, little bit of a hitch route there for a positive gain, first down. Passed around the tackle, but not enough to keep him from getting that first down. So first and 10 at the 15 now as we approach eight minutes to go, second quarter. Providence, second straight, good drive. We'll see if they can finish this one off. Handoff here and carry taken by Bartz and pretty well defended by Breck. This time he'll pick up a yard or two. It looks like at least a couple. Right, at, at, as you said though, you know, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, you wanna, when I talked to Coach Rooney last night, he, uh, he said they're a spread offense, but they like to run the ball. Good open field tackle there by Nate Miller. It was kind of one-on-one -on -one and he got him to the ground. So here we go with second down and eight here for Providence. Option to the right. Willingans now will pitch it late to Sapu. Nice cut. He runs through a tackle, and he's going to have the first down, it looks like, down inside the five to about the four. Looked like they kind of had him strung out. He's a little stronger than maybe at first looks. Yeah, he is, and I, I think... Uh, I think he's really been in the, you can tell he's been in the weight room in the off season here, Jay. He's a slasher. He's a real slasher kind of runner. And uh, you're not gonna bring him down with an arm tackle, that's for sure. First and goal for your line. So first down and goal to go at the five here for Providence. Second time this evening they've showed option, Jay. A little variety in the offense, keep the defense on their toes. Kind of a light box here by Breck. Let's we'll see if they run it again. They are going to go power. Sapu tripped up, though, after a short gain on the play. Miller was down low there for Breck, and I think kind of cut his feet out from under him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it sure looked enticing to just try and run that ball power up the middle. and They did. Didn't get a whole lot. Maybe a yard, it looks like, so second and goal. Willingans, as, as, as I said earlier, I've been impressed, even though this is his first starting opportunity. He seems pretty cool out there, Jay. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be, uh, uh, you know, too nervous at, at the controls and doing a nice job. T set behind him here. Looks like they're going to try and mash it home. Toma is in there in the backfield. He will get the handoff here, and he fights forward. He was hit right away by Dylan Lubke, and Brack saying they have the football. No, nope. looks like the officials disagree. They're saying that uh, Toma was down. 
Yeah, change it up again, a little T formation there. Let's see if we can get another look. I have to admit, I kind of stopped looking to see it. Mm. Hard to tell when that ball might have come out. Yeah. But we'll have a third and goal, and back to that straight T look here for Providence. Going to run option, and it's Willingans getting in for the touchdown. Providence keeping it basic down near the goal line, and they're able to get it in for the touchdown as Charlie Willingans will pick up the TD for Providence. Yeah, nice job of finishing off the drive that time, and why not? You know, the, the option, even though they've only ran it three times, it's been, it's been good to them tonight, Jay. It wasn't the smoothest start to that. It looked like they kind of got caught up in traffic a little bit trying to get out of there, but they were blocked. Uh, the edge was blocked well enough that he was still able to get out there and find enough room to get in. Looks like Providence doesn't have uh, a full complement out on the field here. Looks like they're planning to kick. They've got the kicker out there, but I think they only had 10. Yeah, and they're probably going to get a, a delay of game here where he's going to call a timeout. Yeah, that's not uncommon in game one either, Jay. No, that's that's uh, definitely true, especially if you get a situation where somebody just maybe gets nicked up or, you know, and they, they just somehow it doesn't get communicated that the next guy needs to be ready to get in yeah. there. Some, some schools actually put little dots on the sideline, yeah. and we, when they call for punt team or PAT or whatever, they <laughs> there's another look at it. Actually got a pretty good block. Uh, by the, who was, you know, in effect the fullback on that play, the middle of the tee, Nick Toma. Yeah. Right there, he's yeah. able to drive somebody back. Missed the second guy, but at that point it didn't really matter. And I was thinking that earlier when they got stopped on the second down play, you don't have to, when you only need a couple, it doesn't have to be pretty and it doesn't have to, you know, get you into a, a clean walk through just so you get over that goal line is all you're looking for there. That's right, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't really get style points necessarily. Big Monago on to attempt the extra point. He gets this one up and it is good. So 5.26 to play here in the second quarter and Providence strikes first. Willingans the touchdown run and the extra point is good and it is seven to nothing now in favor of the Lions. Yeah, nice job of finishing off the drive, as we said. The other thing, the other thing too, Jay, uh, for future opponents of Providence, by showing the option, that gives that gives uh, the, their opponents one more thing to be concerned about on defense. The, the option's a, 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 a tough offense to defend, and you have to, you know, you take away practice time. Yeah, and I think. Um you know, you want to do it just enough that, that you can be good at it, too, because I think sometimes teams might try to throw it in when it's not a staple of their offense, and then they have trouble with it as well. Right. But it looks like they've, they, you know, they're doing it enough that, that uh, they look comfortable getting it done. Yeah, and I mean... When you only have eight regular season games, you want to win them all. But you also on this first night, you're really just looking to get yourself running into the season. How do we execute? Who's making plays? Who, you know, doing all the little things right matters to coaches almost as much as the scoreboard on, on opening night. Yeah, the little things become big things in a hurry. And uh, but so far, you know, so far both sides, not a lot of offsides or procedural penalties so far. Times kickoff, angling it toward the sideline, and it is going to go out of bounds. Good decision there by Nick Burney not to try and gamble and field that one. He could sense that the, more than likely that ball was going to keep moving outside. So that was a that was a very smart play by Burney, I thought. Also, I think not a bad idea in terms of placing the football. I I feel like that's something that we're seeing a lot more of than we used to kicking off with a strategy with you know some kind of game plan rather than just hey go ahead and kick it as long as you can right i i agree i i'm, I'm seeing more uh placement type pooch kicks if you will on kickoffs and also a little more directional punting uh 
you know, a lot of times you get some real, real, real speed return guys. You don't want to, you don't want to kick line drive balls to them or, or kick to them at all. So from the 35, Langer and company trying to get the offense going here for Brack. They've had a few positive things go for them, and he's in trouble, and he is going to be sacked. Oh boy! Quick arrival by Peyton Bartz. Got a little help as well, but that was mostly Bartz as he came in pretty much free and gets the sack. Yeah, that was a little bit, a little bit of a. They had they had a tight end to the other side, a little little short handed on that side, and Providence took uh, took advantage of it. Boy, he, the blocker just missed him entirely. Yeah. And Bartz sidestepped him and made a beeline for the quarterback. So second and six after the sack. Toma getting in there, making a bid to get a half sack on that. But I, I think if I'm a Providence stat guy, I'm going to have to give Bartz all of that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bartz showed nice speed, didn't he? You know, getting through there and and putting, uh, putting the sack on the quarterback. Boy, D-line coach going to be watching that film and say, okay, this is exactly what we taught about <laughs> in terms of uh, ripping through there. And Breck's going to use a timeout. They kind of were a little slow regrouping after that sack, and it just felt like they were in danger of uh, you know running out of time there. And uh, we do have play clocks here, by the way, which is nice. It certainly helps, I think, the players, but also really the does. fans, the coaches, and us. I think, it, I think it really helps the quarterback if they're paying attention in terms of delay of games. And and uh, I thought on that play, too, I thought maybe uh, Breck had, had a, a different guy at quarterback on that one, Jay, but I, I, I could be wrong about that. I, I didn't think that was, although, uh, although maybe I just didn't see the one in front of the eight and it was Langer. A little over four and a half to go here in the second quarter, and Providence Academy leading Breck now by a score of seven, nothing. Now they do go by Providence Academy, but they've also got uh, Maranatha Christian and Heritage Christian and West Lutheran and River Tree as part of their co-op situation as well. Number of schools that feed into that. So second down and long, oops, Toma got an early start there. I don't think there was any movement from Brack. I think it's gonna be up offside against the Lions. Trying to get himself a good jump to get started on the pass rush. Offside. So that'll move at five yards up. It'll be second and 11 now. Probably a jump that he doesn't need. <laughs> he's, shown, he's shown some good speed off the edge, but uh, just looking for an additional edge. Langer dropping, oh boy, sailed that one over the head of Miller. Looked like it was gonna be at least uh, the opportunity for a relatively easy pitch and catch, but he had un got too much on that one and sailed it over the top, and they were lucky that Providence didn't have anybody quite in position to, to uh, snare that one behind him. Yeah, Pro Providence had a, a defender between the, the hot screen and the, and the wide receiver, and the ball goes high. Not a bad call, you know, for a young quarterback to kind of get his confidence a little bit, but but he uh, he juiced it high. Bunch formation at the top, Jay, for uh, Breck on this one. Langer's looking that way, throwing, and Bierke dropped it as he was hit hard there by Luke Trader coming up. That one wouldn't have went for much anyway, but as Bierke not able to reel that one in, so they'll have to punt. A nice job by Trader timing that ball. Those plays are tough too. If if the other two receivers really aren't 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 stock blocking, it's uh that can make for a long day for the for the guy actually responsible for catching the ball. Mitchell on to punt. Fonlander waiting back deep. Mm. Oh, boy, they almost got him. The flag is down as they did run into the punter. And it's going to bounce dead inside the 25 to about the 23. 
You know, I've been kind of waiting for this, Jay. The, the, as, I, as I mentioned earlier in the game, typically you're – now maybe it's a situation with the snapper, but typically your punter is about 14 yards, and uh, the Breck punter is, I don't know, in that 10 to 12-yard range. So I'm not surprised that Breck's come or that Providence is coming after him. Going to be a roughing the punter, so 15 yards and a first down. Yeah, they got – I think that uh, Grant Sandell actually just – thought there was no way he was going to miss the ball and uh, instead got leg and so now uh, football at the 49 Breck getting another possession out of it after they rough the punter yeah keeps their drive alive here in a 7 nothing game see if they can take advantage of that Langer throwing oh and that one Tip. There was really no receiver breaking off the route there, and Grant Sandell reaching for that one. That one could have been big trouble there. I'm not, it didn't seem like Langer and his receiver was on the same page there. I'm not sure Langer even saw uh, Sandell on that one, Jay. I'm just, I'm just not sure. And uh, sometimes that's, you know, that's the case when you got a crossing safety or crossing linebacker. Everything looks rosy, and then the linebacker steps in. Yeah, there were a couple like that in the Gopher game last night where you see the replay and you go, oh, that's why he threw it there. You realize that, you know, somebody's kind of drifting out of, from out of his vision into the pick it off. Sure. And off left side here and decent gainer for Kadu. And he'll pick up about seven or eight. It looks like seven they'll give him. So it was a nice job of, of Breck's O-line kind of washing uh, Providence down on the, on that side, washing that, washing the defense down, and a nice positive gain for Breck. Yeah, I don't think Providence expected that play. I fully admit I didn't either. It was something a little different wrinkle than what we'd seen from them. Right. The other thing too I like about Breck, they're not, you know, they're not panicking. I mean, they're kind of you know run and pass. Uh oh. And Providence jumping again, and this should give them the first down here. And I can hear the D-line coach for Providence right now. Watch the ball. I guarantee you that's what he's saying. <laughs> so another first down via penalty here as they'll move it inside the 40 to the 39. Fresh set of downs, three and a half to go in this first half. And Breck putting a march together with the help of Providence penalties. Breck goes trips to the top side on this one, Jay. Gonna go to Cadu, and he is wrapped up after a pickup of about three. Nice little push, though, by Breck's offensive line, I thought. You know, again, so far, you know, Breck, or Providence has been pretty stingy on those inside runs, Jay. But nice, nice little push by the left side of, uh, of Breck's O-line. And they varied their splits a little bit, too, I think, depending, you know, they're trying not to get predictable. Right, right. And doing doing a fairly good job of it, I think. Of course, as you said, Providence is helping them out with penalties, too. Yerke coming in motion. Langer throwing complete to Miller. He gets a block. Miller trying to get to the corner, and he's going to go for a touchdown. No flags on the play. 36-yard strike for Breck as they get into the, the hands of one of their best playmakers and Miller got a good block downfield as well. Sure did, and again, you know, not the easiest route to, to hit. Langer did a great job. Didn't have to break stride at all. Miller showing some good speed and uh, could have a tie game here, Jay. No matter what happens on this extra point, this, this drive has to really reassure Breck, I think, Jay. The left footer, Mitchell, on to attempt the extra point here. Benji Sullivan, the holder. Pretty good rush coming, but he got yeah. it up quickly and gets it through. So with 2.25 to go in the second quarter, Breck ties it up 7-7. Seven, seven as they get the drive extended on the roughing the punter penalty and then eventually get this touchdown strike as Miller coming across the middle yep. and then watch right there, good block. 
Boy, he, I think he really caught Providence off guard with how fast he was turning that corner, too. I think so, too. He kind of caught him flat-footed a little bit, I thought. Yeah. A little, little shallow. Actually, that's more of a shallow cross than it is a slant. But, uh, yeah, Miller showing some, some nice speed. And in... You know, the way things are called today, too, I thought Grady Martin, the b receiver, did a good job of not lighting up somebody on a blindside block there. Right. He, he got a block, but it, it certainly appeared to be a good legal one. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times you just have to shield the guy, you know, kind of get in front of the person. You don't have to, yeah, you don't, you don't have to take the guy out. Mitchell getting set to kick off, and Brack, who I think it's fair to say the underdog coming into this one, uh, feeling pretty good right now as they've tied things up late in the first half. Kick coming there to Trader. Trader has some pretty good room up the middle, and he'll be out to the 35. Brought down there by Jackson Kroom, but Good return for the Lions, 2.18 to go, and they've got a couple timeouts and kind of a, a good uh, situational opportunity to see what they can do offensively in this late late half situation. Yeah, and some, you know, some momentum on their side from the previous drive. Well, as you said, plenty of time, plenty of, of, uh, of timeouts, and uh, don't have to... Uh, don't have to really hit the panic button here. Two receivers each side here for the Lions. Willingans looking to throw deep into traffic for Kloss, and it's picked off by Muhammad. Takes a hard hit, but Breck will have the football back. Has a nice job defensively there to read that one and Muhammad with the pick. There's that name again, Jay, Muhammad, 10th uh, grader. And, uh, you know, that one I thought Willinghans, you know, just maybe kind of put this one up for grabs a little bit. Yeah, and there were, I, I can't imagine that they wanted two receivers. Well, actually, uh, the one broke it off. So I was going to say they were running kind of too much together there at first. Right. A little bit surprised that they went for the bundle there, you know, and you, as you said, they got a couple of timeouts and, and uh, you know, plenty of time. You know, they could, they could dink and dunk a little bit. So Breck football at their 45. Langer will hand it off up the middle, and Cadu will pick up about three. That one kind of had the feel, Joe, to me, as one where Willingans kind of made up his mind ahead of time where he was going to go with that ball. I agree. Yeah, I agree. He <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't any doubt. He 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 dropped back, planted his feet and uh, he was going downtown with it. Nice little block there by by uh, Dylan Lupke, I thought on that uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times people scoff at there's nothing wrong with a 3-yard gain. Langer going to tuck it and run and has a little room. He made a nice move, and he is wrapped up. It'll have enough for the first down. They drive him backward, but he got to the 44. Yeah, I think his forward progress definitely got him the first down. Yeah, he stuck his foot in the ground there, showed a little wiggle on that one. Yeah, that was a kind of a subtle move, but it was, it, it was nice. It was effective, wasn't it? So there plan for this drive might change a little bit by picking up that early first down. I think they were going to not gamble early but see what happens and then now you know we'll, we'll maybe look at trying to score here late. Rush coming. Fires up the middle and here's Miller again getting free. Oh my. Oh and just tripped up there. Saving tackle by Fonlander as they, uh, they let the rush come through up the middle, kind of almost like a little slip screen. Kind of like a, yeah, a middle screen to to one of their speed guys. Boy, and you can really see the confidence growing from Langer, Jay. Uh, yeah. I think that I think that might have been a touchdown saving tackle right there. Under, under 40 seconds to go now at the 25 of Providence. Langer under pressure and Toma. Oh. Blocks that pass. It'll be an incompletion as he just smothered that ball as he was trying to throw. 
Yeah, it looks like he was going for the for uh, maybe the you know the nine route, the you know the long ball on that one, the way he was kind of winding up. Great rush by Toma as he got around the edge pretty easily there. But again, what I would tell Langer is he, he you know his his back leaked out of the back, and there really was nobody from Providence around him. He just dumped the ball off. And uh, check downs equals first downs. Second and 10, the only good news for Breck there is, of course, the clock stops on an incompletion. They get a chance to kind of regroup a little bit heading into this next play. Again, the rush coming, and Langer is hit and thrown down. That's Toma again. He has been everywhere. And they're going to say that there's a receiver close enough there, apparently, or he was aiming towards somebody when he was kind of yeah. being spun around. So third and 10. Toma has been the man defensively. He's a football player, Jay. He is a real football player, that kid. Breck getting late into the play clock here. They're gonna, they might have to use that last time out if they either that or hurry up here. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna make it. Better call timeout. Let's see, did they? No, I don't think they did. It's going to be a delay of game. And again, we mm. talked about having that, that clock visible on the field. There's really no excuse for that one. No, there really isn't. There really isn't. Because they were not going to be close to getting it off on time. And that's where yeah. the, the, you know, running over to talk to the coach can be <laughs> a, a difficult thing to get back in and get that play called sometimes. Yeah, it can be. It can be time consuming. And five yards is, is really precious, uh, you know, when you get a nice little drive going like, like they have. Big difference, third and 10's not easy, third and 15 is really difficult. Langer stepping up and then he takes a pounding here. He will advance the ball a couple yards, but still Providence gets what they wanted out of that one as they forced him to step up. I think if he went with his first decision there, Jay, to tuck it and run, I think he would have made some real positive yardage here. Now they're just going to run out of time. They must, the scoreboard says they have one timeout left. Oh, my goodness. Brecklett, at least 10 seconds run down before they called that timeout. I thought they were either the, you know, clock wasn't, or scoreboard wasn't right, that they didn't have any left, or they, I don't know. Now it's going to be. Presumably just a Hail Mary to the end zone. That's really all yeah. options you have left, I guess, or the main one anyway. Don't think we're in field goal range here by any means. It'd be a long field goal, wouldn't it? Although I guess you could consider, you know, getting the ball in Miller's hands and see if he can't get loose again too. Right. Yeah, he's been a nice weapon for them. And I like what Breck does on offense, too. They put him in the slot. So it's he's not always the easiest guy to defend when he's coming out of the slot and he gets a receiver on either side of him. Right, and he's kind of got the option. He's got a lot of room to work with in the middle there. He can go either way, and you're not sure where to be looking for him. Yeah. A little bit of a choice yeah. route situation. Looks like they do have Mitchell on. Hmm. We talked about the Providence kicker's legs. This would be a 45-yard field goal attempt for Colin Mitchell, but they are going to give it a go. At least lining up to the, that way. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Providence here. I think this is more concern over a potential fake. I think so too, Jay. Maybe icing the kicker a little bit too, but probably lesser than now. Because I think they were more than likely surprised that there was a field goal attempt coming as well. I think somebody on that Providence staff maybe saw a little something there that. Uh, yeah, and again, like most teams, it is a quarterback that's the holder too, their uh, backup, Sullivan. Yeah, so a fake, a fake could be in play with a backup quarterback. And as you said, maybe turn Miller loose down the sidelines. 
I saw I, if it's me and you don't actually intend to kick it here, I would rather just keep your offense out rather than right. putting quite a bit on a you know the holder slash backup quarterback. Right. Move up a yard here, be a 44 yard try now for Mitchell. And now we get a flag. Oh boy, Brack. Gonna get a procedure penalty Ooh. here, moving back five. Let's see if that erases the possibility of this still being a field goal attempt. Well, not what they needed there. No. Let's see if they keep their kicker out there. This would be a 49-yard try here. I don't know. Looks like they're still lining up as if they're going to do that anyway. Here's Mitchell. That uh -oh. one is blocked. Yeah, I wondered about that, whether they could protect well enough either, and they certainly did not as Bart's coming through and smothered it. Yeah, and that's the danger, too. He picks that up and goes the other way. All of a, all of a sudden, you maybe go in 14-7 at halftime. So we reach halftime on this blocked field goal attempt there as Bart splitting the D gets up the middle. And each team has blocked a field goal here in the first half. Our score at halftime is Brack 7, Providence 7. We'll have first half highlights and more football coming up here for you on CCX Sports. CX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Welcome back here to Providence Academy, a warm night. Providence and Breck tied up 7-7 at halftime. A good ball game here in our season opener, or actually our second game uh, for CCX, but the season opener for these two teams here. Take a look at highlights from this opening half of play. Langer throwing here past Chip. <laughs> Willingans throwing it long downfield, Martin hauling this one in. And they eventually got a uh, first and goal, but were unable to score. And then Breck has had some mishaps here and there. That one was not a good one for them, a loss of 14. But here is Providence. Sapu with a nice run here inside the five. Great cutback, and it eventually sets up uh, their touchdown, which is Willingans, the quarterback, keeping it on the option. And the Lions took the lead there a little past the midway point of the second quarter. Langer in trouble, and he is dropped here by Bards. But eventually they had a roughing the punter penalty, which helped them keep the drive alive. And then it is Miller cutting across the middle, got a great block, and then dynamite speed around the corner there for Nate Miller scoring the touchdown with 225 to go in the quarter and then trying to go deep here the Lions a little underthrown and Muhammad picking this one off but then they ultimately had a field goal blocked on the final play of the half too as Bart's getting through there and that's the thing when it's that long you feel like you've got to drive the ball and not get it up quick too and Either way, they didn't block very well, so Bart's give him a lot of credit there for good effort he got there. Yep, good special teams play there by Providence to end the half. See the look at the stats. An edge definitely for Providence. Breck, uh, you know, you factor in that lateral that went for loss. They didn't run the ball much effectively at all, but overall, you know, the yardage not too bad in there. And then a uh, big number two, the penalties for Providence in that that uh, drive was really kept alive by two of them, two big ones by the Lions. So, really and uh, each team turned the ball over once. Yeah, really helped Breck, obviously, on that. Passing yards, virtually equal. Yeah, so uh, as, as you said, uh, 
maybe a little bit of a surprise. You know, Breck, uh, Breck hanging in there. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like they're just hanging on to be in there either. Like they're getting lucky to be in there. They, they've played a pretty solid first half. And, they did. And we're even up at seven. We will take a timeout. Come back with more of our live coverage of Skyway District Football. Breck and Providence Academy tied up at seven apiece here on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And we get set for quarter number three. Breck will kick off to begin the second half. So Providence will get first opportunity with the football. A 7-7 tie, but Joe, I, not going out on a limb, I think it's fair to say that Breck might be a little happier with the score than Providence is I, at this point. I think so, yeah, I think so. We'll see if they can hold up because it, you know, a little bit short-handed or whatever, but I, yeah, I think uh, they've they got to be real happy where this game is at this point. Colin Mitchell, who had that long field goal try block to uh, end the first half, will kick off here for the Mustangs. Von Lander and Martin waiting back deep here for Providence. Yeah, and sometimes having a lot of guys play both ways on a warm night shows up more down the stretch than it does in that first half too sure can yeah sure can in the second half we'll be, we'll be kind of keeping an eye on that one jay here's mitchell driving it low Scooped up, bobbled briefly, but picked up there by Fonlander and a nice open field stop as getting down there to bring him down as Miller. And he'll be right at about the 20 yard line, it looks like here for Willingans and the Lions offense here. Yeah, nice coverage there by Breck on the kickoff. Going to make him drive 80 yards. 80 yard drives are uh, hard to come by sometimes, Jay. Yeah, especially early in the year. I thought Providence offense, you know, got a little bit better as the half went on, too. They had a couple nice drives. You know, one resulted in points, one did not. But, um, you know, they, they just looked more comfortable, I thought, as things went on. Yeah, they did. They caught some rhythm there. So here we go. As I said, first and 10 at the 20. Willingans will sling it out there and complete. Martin obviously was kind of looking where he was going to go before he reeled that one in. And it will be second down and 10. A little, little bit of the don't leave home without it here, Jay. And it's but just such a natural thing. Yeah. You're looking like, okay, I'm going to set up the guy and get ready to go. I think actually he let it get to his pads. We didn't have a great angle on that, but I think he, he kind of let it get to his pads on that one. Breck had a little something to say to him as I saw him giving him the <laughs> shush sign there. <laughs> Second and 10 play action. Willingham's going to throw it deep downfield. Tipped in. Oh, my goodness. Hold in by Martin after Muhammad got his hands on that one. Would have been a spectacular catch. He did a good job of staying with it as he realized the defender was going to deflect it. And now Martin looks like he might be cramping up a little bit, yeah, perhaps. Definitely has that cramping up run. But uh, yeah, he put the thrill into that one, didn't he, Jay? And there's our, there's our guy, Muhammad, again. Boy, this was exciting for both. It looked like it might be a pick. And then yeah. just off his hand, and Martin, oh, boy. Couldn't quite reel it in. It would have been, unless he cramped up entirely, they would not have been able to stop him from scoring if he'd been able to bring that one in. But instead, it's a long, exciting incompletion, and it's third and 10. Blitz coming, Willingant's in trouble. Got rid of it, and a nice catch by Sapu. There is a flag down, though. And we'll see if this one might be coming back. Good job by Willingans to, to, to get rid of that one to his back and 
Yeah, we'll see where the, we'll see where this one goes. Breck bringing pressure. Miller indicating it looks like it might be a lineman downfield here. Looks like it's going to definitely come back. Yeah, the execution yeah. was really pretty good by Providence on that. Well, not quite good enough. Not apparently. quite. Not Line, quite good lineman enough. downfield. <laughs> Miller was blitzing in and forced Willingans to get rid of this one. Yeah, Miller was, Miller was coming yeah, hard. Yeah, it looks like 54 out there. Yeah, there. It's kind of a screen setup, but at downfield be well before that ball was thrown. Right. I think the timing was disrupted. It maybe isn't necessarily a mistake by Titus Johnson, but. Yeah, if you catch the ball behind the line of scrimmage, then it's all good. Third and 15, Willingant's in trouble. Ooh, got a nice block to avoid a sack, but now just has to throw it away as Miller got to him again. Did have a receiver right over there, Fonlander, and it will fall incomplete. So a punting situation upcoming here for Providence. Willingant's doing a nice job of keeping, and extending the play a little bit, keeping his eyes downfield, but there just wasn't really anyone to throw to. We'll see if uh, Breck brings any kind of pressure here given, uh, given the field position. Miller and Bjerke, they've got two deep safeties here, so it looks like maybe they're kind of want to try and set up a return as Haim on to punt. His first punt of the game. Oh, and they got a piece of it. They Partially sure did. blocked. But it takes a great bounce for Providence, so it's not as bad as the field position is going to be, but still a little... Mustangs will have it at the 35 yard line. Yeah, I wasn't able to catch who got the hand on it there, Jay, but you got. Good snap. Maybe just a little slow getting rid of that. Hard rush on the outside there. Looks like it's uh, Loopke. Loopke, yes. He had a block earlier on the field goal. And of course, he's going both ways. So here they go from the 35 of Providence. Uh-oh, broken play here. Now he throws it and it'll be incomplete. Looking <laughs> for Cadu there as Langer. Uh, somebody went the wrong way as he turned to either handoff or fake the handoff and then it was like, uh-oh. Yeah, nobody home when he turns around there on that one. Wreck oh. fortunate there. Yeah, they were. Also fortunate to not have a, an eligible receiver downfield on that one, too. I thought that, too, Jay. I, I saw a lineman downfield for sure on that. So a second and 10. Langer's pass tipped. Oh. Miller still with the catch, but they're going to lose yardage on the play, it looks like, as uh, Grant Sandell closing quickly uh, once that ball was tipped. The uh, timing was severely disrupted. Best way to defend a guy like Miller, Jay, on a tip ball like that or uh, closing fast. Don't let him get out into space and use that speed. I guess ultimately in hindsight, dropping that one would have been better for them, but you don't, you're not thinking that at the time. No, not at all. There's Miller in the, in the slot again, Jay, up top. Third and a dozen. Throwing, they find Miller. Yeah. Gonna be short of the first down, but this very well could put him in a spot where they're gonna go for it here, I would think, down to about the 29. I would think so. Nice little out out route by Miller. Because you gotta you have to respect his speed going long. So he just cut it off, a little chair route. And uh, yeah, I think it's four down territory for sure. Yeah, fourth and four here coming for Breck. Trying to take advantage of uh, getting a partial block on a punt after a good defensive stop here, but the Lions defense looking to rise up and stop Breck in their tracks here. A, a really pretty key play here, even though we're early in the third quarter, fourth and four. Really is. Oh, we had oh. somebody flinching here. Ah, that's not what Breck wanted. Boy, it reminds you when we were talking to Coach Harris, first thing he said, we just got to make sure we don't beat ourselves. Right. And it's actually Providence has had more trouble with penalties in the game so far, but that one definitely hurts for Breck. That really does hurt Breck. Providence showed a little bit of pressure there, a couple of little steps, and I think the O-line guys just couldn't hold their water on that one. Yeah, Jeff. and it might have been a receiver out top, it looked like, too, that 
okay. that flinched a little bit. And I agree. I think the defensive guys getting antsy might have yep. made Breck uh, not hold their position as well, too. Yeah, they're bringing pressure again. Langer's yeah. throw Ooh. too high. It's incomplete, but they'll take over on downs. Tried to go to Bjerke. He was kind of cut off on the route, and it made it. I think it made it look like a worse throw than it really was there. And it will be Providence holding on downs as they come up with a good defensive stop there. Big stop by Providence. Yeah, after giving the Breck, Breck the football in pretty good field position, they hold them to... Basically, one yard is where it ultimately ends up. Yeah, nice job by that Providence D. So, Will and Gans and the Lions offense coming back out there at their 34-yard line. We're just about three minutes into this third quarter, and no score in this quarter. It's still 7-7, which was our score at halftime. Sapu takes the handoff here, trying to... Keep the legs driving there. He'll pick up about three. Yeah, as I said, he's a slasher. He just he's kind of like you know keep those pistons. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Bart on the on the carry there. My right. mistake. Four yard carry out of that one did Bartz. He's made some nice plays on the other side of the ball tonight as well, including on special teams, obviously getting through and blocking that last kick. Yep. So Providence certainly has some guys going both ways as well. Not the number is Breck, but Willingans will run it. Whoa, and he has stood up. Yeah, not Kept much. the legs driving, but Lubke met him <laughs> and wasn't going to let go. And Will Knudsen also was right there. Yeah, that was run all the way, but uh, but not much of a hole there. So bring up a third down. Actually, it looked like a short loss on that play. Trying to maybe run a quarterback draw. I'm not sure, Jay. Two by two by Providence here. Obviously, passing situation. Willingans throwing out to the sideline, too high up and over Fonlander's head there. Muhammad had decent coverage, but that throw didn't really give an opportunity. And now a punting situation again, presumably here for Providence as you know, bringing that punt unit and Grant Heim will line up to kick it. A lot of times that's where your footwork comes into play too, Jay. If you if you kind of overstep, Willingans, uh, you know, throwing the high ball on that one. Heim gets this one away, a high kick. Bjerke calling fair catch, oh but then he misread it, and it's going to take a great bounce for Providence all the way down to near the five-yard line. It'll stop dead on the six. Oof, that's going to be about a 56-yard punt. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he had a pretty decent punt, you know, going in, but... Uh, you know, you really, if you have an opportunity here, you got to catch this because. Yeah, uh, yeah Bjerke just misjudged it. It sure looked like he was in a position to get it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he realizes it's over his head. The wind might have fooled him a little bit there. I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt, I guess, like an outfielder who thinks he has a beat on it and then realizes it's carrying on him. Yeah. And that's, that didn't help Rex cause any. They're at their own six now. Yeah, those are two or three first downs now that they have to pick up pitch out there and that one's going to go for no game. We get a flag down on the play as Bernie on the carry. Let's see if this might be a hold or was it more on the defensive face mask type thing. It was right out on the edge where they were a blocker engaged with and it looks like it's going to go against Providence. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's going to be a face mask of five yards at, I believe. Oh no, not five. Personal foul. 15. Huh? Yeah. Personal foul face mask. Again, Providence kind of shooting himself in the foot a little bit here, helping uh, helping Breck get, get out of the shadow of their own end zone. Boy, I'll say, and then they, <laughs> they, they pretty much made the stop on the play already, too. It yeah, they really did. It kind of hurt. Out to the 20 now, first down for Breck. And that throw kept it low, yeah. and, and the catch made there by C.J. Roberts. 
That was one where it's probably turned out to be a good thing that he did keep it low. I don't know that it was necessarily his intention, but see, that one kept it so it was really only Roberts or nobody was going to be able to get to that one. Yeah. C.J. Roberts, another 10th grader for uh, for Breck J. And C.J. Yeah. looks like he might be having a little cramp issue as well. Yeah. He's kind of doing that little dance trying to keep <laughs> the calf from stiffening up, it looked like. Exactly. Trips here by Breck. Uh-oh. Another penalty. Early start up front again there for Providence. It looked like as Eli Aarons. Hmm. It is going to be against the Lions, so they're nearing double figures in penalties, and that is something they are obviously want to clean up. I mean, you you want guys who want to fire off the ball, so you don't right. fault that part, but you just got to watch it. You got to watch the ball. It sounds so simple, but it's so true. And off here, and nothing much happening as well defended again. It's Bart's getting there first for the Lions, and it'll be a loss on the play. Yep, and then Romeo Sweet kind of come in and clean it up. Past the halfway point of the third now. Still 7-7, each team scoring a touchdown in the second quarter, and that's uh, all we've had in terms of points for these teams. Each team had a field goal attempt blocked. Little bunch formation here, Jay, at the bottom of the screen by uh, Breck. Langer stepped around Toma's rush, trying to buy some time, and now throws it away as the rush was coming from behind. He could feel that they were yep. about to get there, and uh, did as Grant Sandell got a good hit on him. And what? thankfully, being as high school football, we didn't see an automatic flag anytime you hit the quarterback, which <laughs> right. seems to be the case at uh, <laughs> at the pro level. Pro for level, sure. yeah. Yeah. I thought it was definitely a clean play. He was got there just as he was letting it go. Well, if Providence can stay away from that that yellow laundry here. They should be able to get some good field position. I think they got to keep an eye on number one, too, because yeah. uh, when Brex made a big play, it's generally been Nate Miller. Nate Miller, yes. Fake the toss, and then running it the other direction is Langer. He'll pick up some, but not nearly enough for the first down here, and that presumably will be a punt situation now for Breck as Langer will pick up four. Yeah, and Providence, Providence will, they actually only, they, Rush three and drop eight on that. They're they're gonna they're willing to uh, concede three or four yards. Yeah, it was actually pretty well executed offensively. It's just when you've got that far to go, as long as you know Providence kind of stays at home there, which Romeo Sweet did. Right. Langer showing a little frustration over there, but really there wasn't much he could do. Mitchell on to punt here for Brack. And that one was kind of like his first one. Didn't hit it very well. No, he didn't. Takes a kind of a neutral bounce there right near midfield. So great field position for Providence. Only a 15-yard punt. And now the Lions will have it just into Breck territory as they get the football back. And both teams, it's been kind of fits and starts offensively. It really has. There's been times when you go, okay, we're getting something going. That's looking pretty good. And other times, not so much, which... Again, as you very well know, Joe, not unusual on a first night. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, offensive football is all about rhythm and catch. And, and as you said, in the first half, both sides caught a little bit of rhythm and, and uh, subsequent scores. Uh, that one just did not look good off of his foot right, right off the bat, I thought, Jay. Well, spotted actually right at the 50 here for Will and Gans and the Lions. Solomon Martin one-on-one -on -one at the top. Here comes your option. And a late pitch with it. Sapu makes the catch, avoided that first tackler, and they'll pick up close to five on the play. Boy, Willingans looked like he wasn't comfortable pitching with his left hand, and he ended up pitching it right-handed late, which <laughs> isn't typically the way you teach that. But No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And really good job by Sapu to make that catch because I – 
uh, you know, when they're watching film, I don't think the quarterback coach is going to love the way that Willingans pitched that one. No, not at all. <laughs> he did a nice job, though, of, of, of forcing the DN to make a decision. But as you said, the pitch, you know, looked a little sketchy. Sapu made him look good on that. Hand off up the middle, and that's only about a one-yard gain there for Providence as handling the football that time for the Lions was Tony Ernster, number 23, another junior. And I think it's fair to say that they kind of expected that they might be able to get more movement on run plays than they have in this game. I think so, too. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. And it could be. It could be coming back to what we talked about earlier. They do have that young offensive line, but uh, but Breck's been pretty 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 uh, stout in there. Third and six. Willingans oh is blasted as he throws. Let's see. Is this going to be ruled a fumble? It looks like it might be. I thought pretty it might close. be an incompletion, but it looks as though it's going to be a fumble and recovered by Brack. Yeah. Oh boy, did he get lit up? He really did. Lubke got to him in no time flat, and it is going to be ruled a fumble. Great call by the defensive coordinator of Breck on that one. You know, bringing bringing pressure. Let's see and, if uh, if what any possibility the arm was going forward or not. Yeah, Lubke comes from the linebacker spot, Jay, on that. And uh, yeah, nice little play. I don't know. I'm still thinking this. Yeah, that's close. That's yeah, close. It is close. Now Breck football. Langer down the sideline and incomplete. There was some contact that Naya was trying to get free, and I think he's cramping up. Yeah, yeah and that's that's <laughs> as big a reason as any why he slowed up there. He just couldn't run anymore. Yeah, there's a cramping situ classic cramping situation there. I'm actually kind of surprised, Jay, that we haven't seen more of this tonight. This is knock been, on wood, though, because yeah, now on we're wood. just getting knock. close to the fourth quarter. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's and that, true. we were talking before the game, game I was at on Thursday night, uh, uh, the uh, Cooper Park Center. We saw quite a bit of this down the stretch, and also a uh, uh, co-worker, uh, Chaz Moots, our newest addition on CCX Sports, by the way. Welcome, <laughs> Chaz, and uh, you'll see him around town a lot. He was at the Fridley Totino Grace game and, and said the same. Um, yeah. So some cramping up. Here's what we've got coming up for you next week. Uh, we've got uh, Park Center Cooper Volleyball on the day after Labor Day, Tuesday night matchup. And then uh, the Pirates boys soccer team will be playing at Armstrong on Thursday night. It's kind of a Park Center week there. The Pirates football will be our second yeah, week uh, game as they host Kennedy. And then uh, the following Tuesday, soccer doubleheader, Wyzetta, defending state boys champ, and taking on STMA as well as the Trojans girls team. And sometimes a cramp sort of feels like it goes away quick and sometimes not so much. And, and uh, I still always cringe thinking about, because a cramp, if you haven't experienced a calf cramp, it is not a lot of fun. It hurts <laughs> like mad. And, you know, it's and then a lot of times if you're able to massage it quick or whatever, it, it goes away. And then you feel just fine a few minutes later. But while it's happening, I had one while sleeping and that, a I couple months ago. And, oh, my goodness. I was just going to say, that's when, that's when I typically get mine. But of course, I'm an old man. But uh, ditto, uh, same here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where I typically and it. I always describe it. It's almost like somebody stabbing you in your calf or whatever. My goodness. Yeah, second down and ten for Breck here. Well, one of these teams hopefully is going to break out here at some point, Jay. Langer, pressure coming. Oh. Toma will get there again. Uh -oh. There's a flag down. Huh. See what this call is going to be. He's pointing. Uh, he, he was pointing towards Providence, but now he looks like he's pointing at maybe a Breck player. Not sure. At times tonight, that's been Breck's best play. It was, it was oh, going to be a face mask yeah. against the Lions. 
That's got to be driving Coach Rooney a little bit crazy, I think. Yeah, two guys. Look, watch Toma blow right through two blocks. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he did it briefly have his hand on the mask. Yeah, just a five-yard variety there. Almost looks like this one receiver might be lined up on. Yeah, there he is. Okay, he just, just stepped back. Handoff there will pick up couple for the Mustangs. Yeah. As uh, Cadu on the carry. Again, not a, you know, not a bad call to bang it in there a little bit. At some point, we're probably going to see that uh, Langer-Miller connection, I would think, Jay. It's been a little while. But the pass pro hasn't been great either, so. No, I mean, Toma in particular has just been a handful. They have not been able to block him. Right. Comes up the middle again. Here's the throw, and it's right on target for the completion to C.J. Roberts. It wasn't a huge window to get that one in, but he was confident and threw it right on the hands of Roberts. C.J., another one of those 10th graders. Yeah, yeah, he puts, puts the ball right there. Catches him in stride. Nice job of staying in the pocket and stepping into the throw. Not too bad a coverage, as I said there, by oh. Trader. But um, I like the way Roberts used his hands there, too, to, to you know, go after the ball aggressively and not allow the defender to right. get in there and strip it away. So inside the 20, though, spotted on the 19. Big play for Breck. Going to go with the toss. And it wasn't a whole lot of blocking up front there for Cadu. Got what he could out of it, which would be about two. They had it. They had it cared for on the edge, but they forgot to block. <laughs> they forgot to block the inside linebacker. So second down eight as we get a minute twenty to go here in this third quarter. Breck trying to go ahead for the first time here. That long yep. completion to Roberts of 26, putting them in business here, but now facing a second and eight. There's Miller in the slot at the trips formation up top, Jay. They look that way. Now throwing to the second receiver to the outside. Did he get this? And it's a like catch, but he's not in the end zone. Just short, but it'll be Mitchell. They're giving him, giving the catch, him a though. first and goal, yes. Yeah. The catch is good. No touchdown, but very close. As Mitchell did a good job adjusting to this ball. There was he kind really of did. two questions on it, whether it was going to be a completion, and then was he in the end zone? Hmm. Kind of looks like maybe he was, but. Yeah, it looks like he broke the plane there, Jay, but. They'll spot it on know. the one yeah. instead. See if Breck can punch it in. Sneak. It's going to be Langer trying to sneak it forward. No signal yet. Looks like they got good push there. Uh oh, now Providence is saying fumble. And they're saying second down, it looks like. Mm. So no fumble, but no touchdown either. It'll be second and goal here for Breck. That could be the last play of the quarter if they want it to be, and then just turn around and go to the other end. Wouldn't be a bad idea to talk this over and, and just take the time. They're aware of that, yeah, because they got they're fine with the play clock. And no, no reason to be in a big hurry here. Yeah, they're not going to get it off. Yeah, the quarter will come to an end, and it really did not look like Langer had any idea, though. <laughs> no, which it isn't <laughs> necessarily a good thing. So no. we've reached the end of three. Wreck on the doorstep, but we remain tied up. Seven-seven. The Mustangs and the Lions here on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org.
There's our line score. Each team scoring once in the second quarter. It's 7-7, but Breck on the doorstep. A second down and goal from the one coming up after they had that nice completion to Mitchell to put him in position, and then the quarterback sneak try was stopped on first and goal, and you see, though, they don't have far to go to try and punch this in. I would suspect we might see a sneak again. I, you know, you, then you don't gamble with some type of handoff. Look how close they are. Yeah, and they haven't really been able to, you know, just hand off and run the ball very effectively either. But see if there might be something where instead of going straight ahead, though, that they're trying to, you know, angle and yeah. get, get something going that way. Big sequence here. A lot to ask for the D, but a stop would be huge for them. Langer will try and punch it in here. Yes, it is going to be a sneak again. They push him, and it is a touchdown yeah. for Breck. They had Cadu right behind him, which, again, years ago that wasn't legal to do that, but it is now as he is able to help shove his quarterback over the goal line and in. Yeah, and why not take it? I was just about to say that when they were coming out on the field. I think we're going to see the old push play that used to be illegal. Not anymore, though. So a 13-7 Breck lead, and they'll try and tack on the extra point as Mitchell comes out for the kick. We'll see what kind of rush uh, Providence can come up with. They've, they've, they've had... You know, some luck in coming up the middle, Jay. We'll have to take a look at that. Breck was late getting out there. Now they have to hurry. But half time. Uh-oh, uh -oh. snap bobbled. Sullivan picks it up. He throws and batted down incomplete. So, Breck, uh, you have to feel like maybe the fact that they kind of had to hurry didn't help the cause much there, and the snap bobbled. And so the extra point will be no good, and Breck's lead stays at 13-7. There's another look at that. Cadu just <laughs> pushing him from behind. Yep. Yeah. That he, made the difference. Again, was, I think you were right that when you don't have very far to go, you don't necessarily want to try anything too tricky there. Just give it a shot at yeah. nudging it over that goal line. Just get a good exchange and get some push and... Yeah, there you go. It was about a half a yard, I think. Well, obviously that could be big. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that's a, you know comes into play here as this game progresses. Still a lot of time to go. Obviously, we've just had one play in this fourth quarter, and the Lions sure would like to get a good return, see if they can't set themselves up for a good drive of their own. Exactly. One thing we haven't seen Providence do is throw the ball vertically much. They tried a couple of, you know, longer passes in the first half, but haven't ever really thrown the ball vertically. Mitchell driving it on a line. It slips oh. through the hands of Fonland. Everybody scoops it up and now has yeah. a little room and he gets to the outside. Miller will shove him out of bounds, but he's out close to the 40. Sometimes those ones where there's a little, you know, disruption, yep. a bobble, the defense can maybe overrun a little bit or get out of position, and it actually almost worked out better yeah, for Fonlander. Can definitely throw off the timing. Jay, you're right. Fonlander, you know, really turned this into a really pretty good return. It didn't look good at, at the beginning, but, uh, yeah, the guys staying in their lane, you know, overrun the play, whatever. Yeah, nice return. Miller showing good speed, or that one could have been even more trouble. He was able to cut off the angle there. So they get it to the 40. Providence, it's been a good ball game tonight, and now you just feel like, okay, down the stretch, it's going to get even better here as it's 13-7 Breck lead, but Providence trying to get it going. Willingans throwing. Ooh, oh, it's complete, my and then a big hit. Coming up was uh, Ethan Pastor to make the stop there on the catch by Solomon Martin. Solomon Martin goes back to the huddle and thanks his quarterback for that one, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcasm. He, but to his credit, he did hold on. I mean, it's yeah, still a four-yard gain. Yeah, yeah, he, he kind of got tagged yeah. pretty good, but it's still a completion. And yeah. that'll give your quarterback more confidence to come back to a guy in a situation like that, too, if he doesn't, yeah, you know, cough it up. 
because he's being hit. Right, exactly. Providence showing a little bit of stack receivers. And go with the handoff here. Oh, Ball comes loose. Breck loose, diving Jack. looks like they or they're thinking they've got it. No signal from the officials just yet. Yeah, Breck. Breck uh, yeah. And Breck's got it. Recovery for the Mustangs, I believe, was by Bjerke. Yeah, Bjerke's one who wound up with it out of the pile there. And so Breck coming up with a huge play defensively to get the takeaway in Providence territory at the 44. Huge play here. Another look. Sapu showing some good runs tonight, but this time they're able to, let's see who gets at their hand on the ball. I think it's Lubke who forces that fumble. And then it's just a mad scramble for it at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, the bottom of that pile is always interesting too, Jay. Langer slinging it out there and incomplete. Looking for Grady Martin and that one was really well covered. Uh, not a lot of space to try and get that one in. Right. Yeah, I don't mind the call at all after, you know, after a uh, quick exchange, but it looked like uh, Providence would have had that very well covered. Yeah, and in some teams, in some situations, you would almost say automatically we're going to run here, try and burn some clock and get down the field a little bit, yeah. but that's not really their strong suit, although they do obviously run it here and pick up about four, it looked like. And there was that play that they ran before, too, Jay, where they kind of washed down the, the one side of Providence's defense. That play's been, that play's been pretty successful for them tonight as far Cadu as running the football. Yeah, Cadu picked up about three on that one to the 41. So third down and seven. Big sequence here, again, for both sides, really. Providence wants to get that ball right back. Brack would love to make him pay for that turnover. You got Miller in the slot here again. Ooh, we had some flinching going on there, yep. but it looks like they let it go and gonna be a sack. Nowhere to go. And once again, a uh, big play by Peyton Bartz. Sometimes the best play though is just to eat the football, Jay. I mean, if it's not there, it's not there. And you know, maybe bring your punt team out or see what they're gonna do here. Yeah, it looks like they're intending to punt. Yeah, things just kind of broke down, and at that yeah. point, you're right. Just get both hands on that and don't cough it up. Right. So disappointing for Breck in a way. They, you know, they get the turnover, but they don't really do anything at all with it. We're going to have a timeout taken by Breck here. I don't know that they had all the right personnel out there and not going to risk hurrying things up. They will... Take the timeout with 9.23 to go here in the fourth. Breck leading it 13 to 7. And again, coming in, I wouldn't have really seen this coming in this score at this point. And um, they've done a heck of a job. Yeah, they really have. The, the word that comes to mind the way Breck's playing football tonight, Jay, is they're just grinding. They're grinding it out. They really are. You know, nothing real startling or spectacular, but just, you know, kind of a workmanlike job. They've done a pretty good job of limiting big plays for Providence offensively, I feel like, too. You know, they're, they've been rallying to tackle when there's, um, you know, plays being made. Not that Providence hasn't done a few nice things here and there for sure on offense, but, yeah. um, you know, for the most part, pretty pretty solid defensive effort by Brack. Yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit surprised that with a speedy receiver like a Solomon Martin that, uh, as I said, Providence hasn't, hasn't gone vertical a little bit more. Yeah, he's had a couple of pretty decent, you know, gainers on catches, but not for a while here. Mitchell getting that punt away. Fielded and uh, good coverage downfield by Muhammad there as, as uh, Martin on the return there for Providence. You know, Muhammad is just a ball hawk, Jay. He just, al he always seems to know where the ball is and he's always, he's always kind of right there. There is a flag down on the play too though. And you see Martin appears to be fighting cramps again there for Providence. Yeah. 
See what they've got for a call here. Well, not seeing anything. Let's mm -hmm. figure it out here. I mean, <laughs> personal foul. Oh, it's like a blindside block okay. being called there against Providence. Mm. Well, they really are racking up the penalty yards, too, aren't they, Jay? I mean, we saw that at halftime, and they, they haven't really helped themselves in the second half either. Half the distance back to the, about the seven-yard line. The other thing, too, that I think maybe Coach Rooney's a little bit disappointed in is they haven't been able to really get their run game on track. Not consistently, no. no. I mean, here and there, but... yeah. Got to be careful with the football down here. Will and Gans rolling to his right, throwing as a man wide open, and he hits Fonlander. Oh, nice. Boy, that was a heck of a start to a drive right there, huh? Nice call. It really was. Kind of a deep out by Fonlander. Fonlander is a, a, a very nice player. We've been mentioning his name a lot tonight. 20 yard gain. Kind of maybe feel they had that one waiting in their hip pocket, like to, to use on a, on a key situation. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And again, you know, they, they haven't gone vertical, you know, all that often. And you can go medium vertical, too. You don't always have to throw the ball, you know, downtown. Willingans being chased out of there, throws on the run, and it is complete again. And still on his feet, making moves there for the Alliance's uh, Bergalt. Nice yeah. completion there. Willingans, that was some good uh, improvising there as he was being chased yes, out of the pocket. Was. Yeah. Yeah, the receiver, you know, finding the hole in the zone. A really nice job. And, and watch Bergold here as he gets spun. His helmet spins away a little bit, adjusting and still making his way upfield. That was a nice play. That was a very nice play. Providence getting a little rhythm back in their offense here. Especially especially from where they started. Yeah, and you you know, you kind of get to the point where you say, not that this will be their last possession, but you can't really count on having too many more with no, a little under nine minutes to go. That's right. Got to make something out of it. And let's see, do we have a timeout or? Oh, no. Delay of game. Oh, my. Providence. So they've got a dozen penalties tonight. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting film session, I think, uh, either tomorrow morning or Monday <laughs> or whatever. Clean that thing. you gotta, got to clean those up. Starting here behind the sticks. Yeah, first and 15 now for Providence. Back to their 40, but a promising start to the drive. Oh my goodness, Lubke coming through and just tattooed the yeah. ball carrier. Uh, Sandell, I believe, was on that took that handoff. Yeah, Lubke is a real sticker. And and he, That's a nice play. That is a nice play. And he's a sure tackler, Jay. I mean he you know, he and he and Knutson both. I think I think maybe it was Lubke the guy that they blitzed earlier. And yes, yeah. Second and 18 now after a loss of three, and followed by that delay of game penalty. Willingan stepping up, he will run, almost snuck between the two defenders there, but uh, Jalen Gabeck stayed with him and brought yeah. him down. Yeah, almost was able to step through that tackle. And that's one thing that we said Coach Rooney mentioned. Willingan's a little bit of runner than maybe even people within their own program know about. Yep, yep. He's kind of he's kind of sneaky good on the run. Big third down here, third and eleven for the Lions. Where they are on the field, they might be in four down territory if they get, you know, a half of this or more, I think. Keep an eye on Fonlander on this one, Jay. He's kind of become kind of his favorite receiver. Will and Gans, plenty of time, throwing it up deep for Martin and incomplete. 
Muhammad was out there. A little bit of hand fighting, but again, I think a good you no know, call there. They're both right. just kind of jockeying for position a little bit. And thrown into double coverage. So, you know. So the Lions, I said, you know, maybe four down territory if they get something here, but they don't get anything. And now they do bring the punt team on. Yeah, that's a good no call. That is. Heim, the punter here. And we get flags down. Procedure penalty against the Lions will mark off another five. Starting to become a little raggedy here on the penalty side. We're not starting, it, it kind of continues. And as you said, Jay, you know, there's there's still a little over seven minutes, but I mean, that clock is uh, becoming Breck's friend a little bit here. Miller's going to let it bounce, and then oh. he really thought about trying to scoop it up at that hmm. point, and he doesn't. And it'll be down to the 11-yard line here, so they're able to pin the Mustangs deep. Miller, that's a, those are kind of in-between ones. I really thought he would still try and field it, yeah. but... I did too. Uh, you know, in some ways, you don't want to make a key mistake either. Right. Well, I think if you're going to do it, you do it on that first, but you know, you do it on the first bounce. I'm a little surprised that Miller didn't. Uh, I like, I like my punt return guys to return punts. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, it's definitely true. You're back there first and foremost to catch the ball, and and yep. a couple times you've seen people not be able to do that. We'll see if Providence is able to keep them down here and, you know, maybe flip the field a little bit here with a little over seven to go. On the 11, they go with the toss back. Bernie, and he is met and dropped for a loss on the play. And again, they have just not been able to get much going in the run game at all. No, they really haven't. Good job stringing this one out and then his fellow number 28, Sapu, coming up with a good hit there and help as well from J.P. Nelson. So second and 13 now for Brack. Well, they line Miller up as a tight end on this one, Jay. We'll see if that has any kind of a little different wrinkle. Indeed, um, it was a yeah. middle screen for him and it will fall incomplete. Langer rushed that one. <laughs> good, good eye, Joe. That's exactly who they were looking for. Was was uh, the tight end in that formation? Uh, anyway, Miller. Yeah, he just kind of zipped it in there. You know, needed just a little, a little bit of touch on this. They had it set Boy, up. Boy, I tell you, you're right. I think they might have had a nice gainer there yeah. if they'd been able to put that one right on him. So a third down and long here. Breck, you, you know, you want to be careful that you don't make a mistake this far down in your own end. Yeah, you want to be careful. Now it's their turn to have a costly penalty there as they'll march off five. He seemed to be pointing in the direction of one of the wide receivers from Breck that maybe left a little early on that one, Jay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right, boy. You got to be really careful here, because you could give up an easy one down here. And nothing, nothing has been really easy tonight, has it? No, that's for sure. And I wouldn't want to give Toma a shot at my quarterback in this spot either, <laughs> right back near the end zone. Yeah, he's going to throw it. It's oh, the same play back yeah. to Miller, that little screen that to little the tight middle, end. That little middle screen. And it's working out well for the Mustangs all the way out to the 25, and they'll have a first time. I think the coaches honestly said, Coach, that play was there. Let's stick with it. And they did I, exactly the same thing. I think that, you know, and I, I give Coach Harrison or who, the OC, whoever's calling, I give him a lot of credit, Jay, to come back to that, you know. Sometimes, uh, hey, it almost worked once. Let's try it again. Why not? 
Boy, that's a huge play for field position, for time, yep. and to get that first down. Yeah, if nothing else, it's they're going to bleed, what, another couple minutes off the clock. Right, and then even if they have to punt from, you know, your 25 instead of your 5, is a massive difference. There's Kadu, and he'll pick up a nice gain, one yeah. of their better ones, really, of the night, about yeah. a five-yard run. Definitely one of their, their better inside runs, that's for sure. Kadu's a, Kadu's a nice little runner. He's the guy that, you know, when they when they do that little washdown play, he's kind of the guy they use. Hanging on to the football, ball security, very nice. And Brack, here's where you like to be in a good rhythm, too, where you're not going too quick, but, you you know, you're coming up to right. the line and right. using up as much clock as you can without, you know, putting yourself in a situation where now they are taking a little more time. Yeah, and Langer's taking a look at that clock. That's smart. Another handoff, oh. and here's Kadu, and he'll have the first down. Lions going for the football, and that might have hurt their tackling attempt a little bit there as they'll pick up about 10. Well, if there was ever a time that your run game, you'd want to start clicking for Breck, huh? It's right now. Yeah, and yeah. it's interesting. We kept thinking because of the depth and everything that it maybe would be Breck wearing down in the fourth quarter, but now they're, they're coming alive here. And yeah, they obviously really playing with the lead can give you some confidence too. Yeah, exactly. And O-line, O-linemen love to block for the run. They just do. Yeah, you get to kind of be the aggressor rather than absorbing the defensive player. From the 42 here, first and 10. Again, using as much time as he can, Langer. Yeah, he, he, he put it down to one second. I mean, he can't do it any better than that. No gain this time for Kadu. And that is the advantage, as you mentioned earlier, Jay, in the game. I mean, you're staring right at the game clock. And uh, that's, uh, that's a really nice, nice feature. And the quarterback, I, I thought, I thought Langer has 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 really shown some maturity as the game has gone along here. Yeah, I think he's played a pretty good game. I mean, you don't, he, maybe not the most impressive. You know, he's not going to wow you with the way he no. throws the ball or anything. But he's been been solid. Yep. Now they go out of the spread. He is going to throw. Langer. Oh, oh my goodness! My. Intercepted. Miller makes a saving tackle, but huh. Sapu intercepts that one and nearly looked like he was going to take it back. Oh, we just as we, we were just giving praising <laughs> Langer. Yeah. And that one was not at all what they wanted. I guess I was a little surprised they were throwing it all, but Sapu coming up defensively with the play of the game for Providence. Boy, Miller. Credit him for realizing that he had to quickly become a defender yeah, there. Otherwise, yeah. this was going to be a walk-in touchdown. Yeah, that was um, – I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Jay. I thought they'd continue to run the football. I mean, why not? And, you know, even if you have to punt, then, you know, make, uh, make Providence go the long way. Well, they get the big play they needed defensively there. Yeah. First and 10 on the Breck 33. Here's Fonlander at the bottom. Oops. He's been a go-to guy. Oh, yeah. Sapu, who just made that pick, was late coming out. But see if they'll get this play off. And they do. Pretty good protection. Now Willingham's rolling out to the left. There's flags everywhere, though. And now he has met and tried to throw it away late. But I think this is going to be probably a hold. Two different officials saw it. <laughs> I don't know. It was kind of an awkward looking tackle on the quarterback. I it wonder was. if there might be another penalty right out there on that too. Well, I was watching that and you know, the, the whistle blew and Willinghands was sure looking for a, a, you know, a flag on it, but I think it's gonna go against Providence, Jack. Yeah, maybe that is the only one. Yeah, hold. That one's declined. Huh. Oh, they are going to decline it. So it was oh. just the hold. Okay. And they'll huh. take the down instead. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And once things kind of break down here, that's when you, yeah, there we got the hold on the yeah. back there. Yeah. But now watch at the end here. Yeah. Willingans, it, it just something looked awkward about this when they had him wrapped up here. Eh, no, I guess that was clean enough. 
little surprised they didn't take the penalty. Oh, they called it a sack. Okay, they didn't give him throwing it away. That's, oh, and Lupke almost had it, but now it's gonna be a flag against the Lions. Not on the guy, Lupke, who had his hands on the ball, but a different defender, I think, had him wrapped up. And I think this is gonna be a PI here against Brack. Okay. Is it gonna be on Lupke, do you think? No, Jerry? I don't think so. I think okay. I think he had okay. yeah. just hands on the ball, but another defender, that's, that's my guess anyway. Defensive hold, they'll call. Oh, okay. So, right there, yeah, they kind of got into the body. And uh, so, Cadu called as he was holding up Bergholt as he made that cut. Yeah, he literally kind of ta tackled him. Yeah, he <laughs> reached out and redirected him a little bit. Well, what do we got here, down in distance? Yeah, second and about seven. We got plenty of time here, just, you know, no need to no need to necessarily. Willingan stepping up, gonna try and run. A stiff arm, now he throws it away. And incomplete, Brack wanting an intentional grounding call. I think they're not gonna get it. Careful how you're handling the ball there, Mr. Willingham. There, the ball was kind of waving a little bit on that one, Jay. He does a pretty nice job, though. He's 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 got some strength. Uh, you know, he's he's kind of stepped through some tackles and kind of shrugged off some tackles and threw the ball out of bounds. I give him credit for that. Yeah, he kept the ball alive on that play anyway, but. So a third down coming up here. A little under three minutes to go. Providence down 13-7. But keep in mind, Breck with that missed extra point kind of opens the door for Providence, you know, if they should score to maybe go ahead. Oh, Here's there's... the pass, and it is complete, and that'll be enough for a first down. Fun lander. Yeah, nice job just yeah. kind of sitting down yep. once he got past the sticks. Yeah, he does a nice job of finding the hole in that zone, Jay. So they'll be at the 21 yard line here. Pretty nice job of pass pro that time too by Providence's O line. Yeah, and they've kept kept the quarterback clean. With a few notable exceptions, they generally have pass blocked well. When they've been caught up by blitzes, is really the only time they've been kind of lit up. 2:15 to go, clock moving here. Clutch drive time here for Providence. There's so another little completion yeah. this time, finding Martin. Yeah. Not a huge gain, but a gain nonetheless. Yeah, they could force they could force Breck into coming up and playing press man here, Jay. They, Breck has decided not to do it, but uh, you know they're nickel and diamond them here. Good close there by Breck's pastor to make that stop. So a gain of four, second and six, a minute forty. They're still playing fairly soft out there on the edge. Willingans rolling to his right. Now throws on the run and a nice catch. Going down to meet that one is Bergalt. Did a good job making sure his hands were underneath the ball, not yes, worrying did. about trying to run, just trying to make the catch. Real, po real possession catch, I thought, Jay. Re yeah, really nice. And again, Willingans keeping his eyes downfield, extending the play, a did a nice job. Timeout taken here by Breck. So the first down goal to go here for Providence. Down 13-7, but looking good to try and punch it in. They're at the yep. four-yard line. Yeah, they got some they got some rhythm going here now. They've had four different receivers make multiple catches tonight, too. Martin, Fonlander, Bergeld, and Clausen of all. You know, so they've kind of spread it around a little bit. Contributed, yeah. Yeah, they've done a nice job. As I said, a little bit surprised that Breck hasn't come up and played press. I think Breck has the athletes to do that. But um, Providence running out of real estate now, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe a run or two now, Jay. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't be that surprised if we see 15 be the guy that runs that exactly. too. Exactly. Get, yeah. get him out on the edge. Yep. Puts a lot of puts a lot of pressure on the defense when you do that. 
And Willingham's a pretty, pretty big kid. Yeah, 6'5", a little under 200. There we go. He is going to run it with lead blockers in front, but they didn't quite get lube key blocked, and so he has stopped. Kind of lost yard. Yeah, actually. it looks like just a little short of that, and he didn't get out of bounds there either, so they saw the official windmilling the arm to keep the clock rolling. And now we're going to see a timeout taken here. Boy, I thought initially this was going to be good, but again, they didn't get 52 blocked. Yeah, and he's the guy you really <laughs> you want to account for. <laughs> but to his credit, right, he's he's been a handful. Well, this has been exciting, huh? Right down to yeah, the right very down good to the game. very end. Another look as you see Lupke slipping off that block. They had lead blockers out front there, and it was going to be a bang bang. Whether you know if he got by him, it's going to be a collision at the goal line type right. play to maybe get in. But we'll see if Coach Rooney dials up. Maybe you know he started the game with a jet sweep. Uh, be kind of interesting to see if he goes into his bag of tricks a little bit here, and but uh, or just plays it kind of straight up. And they've still got a lot of options here. Second yep. goal from the five. There's over a minute to go. They don't need to be in any hurry. Two timeouts. Yeah. There's balls still kind of in their court. Uh, pretty good here for the offense. Sapu's in the pistol. Almost bobbled the snap. Now a jump ball out oh. for Martin. It looks like he's got it. Yep. Touchdown. Just won that one-on-one -on -one battle with Ethan Pastor. They threw it back shoulder for Martin. Confident that he could go up and get it, and that's exactly what he did. Yep. Kind of going for that back shoulder fade there a little, little bit, but but as you said, just high pointed the ball, Jay, and you know made a really, really nice catch. Now the all important extra point coming up here. Wow, that's as for Providence sure. will try and take the lead here. Yeah. All these times at practice when you are uh, you have your, t your team yelling at your kicker or whatever, we'll see how this works out. Igbenago on to attempt the extra point. Good rush coming, but he gets it up and it's through. And with 59 seconds to play, Providence goes back in front, 14 to 13. Yeah. You saw Willingans actually bobbled that snap a little bit, but it was just a one-on-one, -on -one, throw it up. Yeah. Breck asking for a push-off call on Martin, but they do not get it. Yeah, maybe it was a little bit of one there, but not enough, yeah. I guess, to, that you're going to call that. And not terrible coverage uh, by, <laughs> by the Breck player, but uh, just, just a high-point catch. Boy, and I was just thinking before they finished off that drive that – there's a chance for Providence that this one kind of ends up like for the Gophers last night. Uh -huh. All in all, not style points, but you might get an exciting win at the end. And that's, right. you know, obviously we still got time to go. 59 seconds, Breck's not out of it, but that's that's sort of the feeling I had going into that when they were closing in on the, the end zone there. Yep. Yeah, and I think some, you know, some nice timely little passing from willing hands to some of those possession, you know, I'll call them possession receivers doing a you know, nice job. Time to kick off here. And they will kick it away fairly deep. Bernie taking it there on the 12, trying to get way across the field here. And nice tackle there will bring him down right around the 30 or just short. 52 seconds, all that's left for Brack, and they only have one timeout to go. So they're gonna need to be fishing and not have negative plays. They're going to need to get the ball to the field. Obviously, you'd think Nate Miller might be a guy they yep. would like to uh, get the ball in the hands of. Roberts maybe is a you know, pretty effective receiver as well. We may see that little middle screen, Jay. You just never know. You know, with Miller, that was an effective little play. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily need to go bombs away here right off the bat, but we'll see what they do. No, but I do think they need to be you know, consistently yeah, get some moving chunk. forward. Otherwise, yeah. uh, they'd run out of time. 
Langer, Oops, mm. that one sailing Mitchell. Miscommunication yeah, there. they weren't on the same page at all there. Kind of thinking that one wasn't really going to be a lot anyway. I don't think even if he was able to get it to him. It yeah, they tried to use the old trips one-on-one -on -one situation. We got Miller. Okay, now we got two by two here. We'll see if uh, any kind of a blitz action by now. They're just rushing. rushing Langer. Forward. Getting it out into traffic. Oh. Wow, there were bodies everywhere. Two receivers, yeah. Miller and Tail and Roberts, rather, were right there together. And that one could have been trouble. Although, you know, in this game situation, playing it safe doesn't win you the game either. So No, no, exactly. They did a nice, better job that time, certainly on uh, Toma, than what they'd been doing earlier. And yeah. Actually yeah. Actually, was a loop key out there. And Providence ran a little twist inside. I thought, I thought Breck might have trouble picking it up, but they did. Here There's we go, third and 10, 44 seconds left. Ooh, rush coming, Langer gets it out and too long down the sideline as he tried to go to Grady Martin. And now we come down to one more opportunity here for Breck. One fateful play here, Jay. Yeah, fourth and 10. And they only have one timeout left, so basically it's game over if they don't get this. All right. Yeah, this is this is not exactly Breck's game, you know, with a minute to go and 70 yards to go. It's it's not really kind of those at least yet not yet in the season anyway. No, and it's a tall ask for any it, any it, offense it, too, especially a you know new starter at quarterback. They do go back to that middle screen, this time to Cadu. Breaks one tackle, oh. but he can't get away. And Providence will take over on downs and just have to kneel it out for the win. Good recovery there. That was actually, again, a, I think, pretty nice play call. And yep. Breck got a chunk, but not a big enough chunk. Yep. Right, exactly. I, I would have liked to have seen that play earlier in the series, Jay, just, uh, just for fun and giggles. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> not not as a desperation, you know, fourth and, and the whole bundle. So 32 seconds, all that remain. And again, one timeout for Bragg. They can stop yep. the clock once, but a, a Providence can just execute snaps. They're, yep. they're golden. Annandale, the next opponent for Brack. And meanwhile, Providence goes to Becker. Oh, my. And on a night when they're dedicating the stadium to their legendary coach, Dwight Lundin. Oh, <laughs> and boy. When coach Rooney was telling me, boy, when I saw the schedule, I'm like, oh, thanks a lot for that. Yeah. There's a kneel down, see if Breck will use a timeout or not. They may not. They realize pretty much the game's over. Um, yeah, I was going to say they go up and face the legend, huh? And uh, yeah, and the, the schedule we mentioned there now in 4A, and the schedule is certainly going to be tough this year for Providence. And Breck is going to look not to stop the clock, and we will tick down to zeros. Boy, uh, Breck, I mean, you give them a lot of credit for coming really in do. here and nearly pulling off an upset. Yeah. But you also give Providence a lot of credit for coming up with that big drive at the end. and. And Pull able to finish it off and get the W. And pulling it out, yeah, exactly. But, but you know, as, I, as, as you said, you know, Breck's got some good takeaways from this game. And, uh, you know, played a nice little game and, and uh, almo almost, almost got there. 59 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Willingans to Martin for the tying score and then the extra point gives Providence the win. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this one. Very good football game here tonight. And good luck to both of these teams uh, throughout the rest of this regular season in 2023. And again, watch for plenty more football action all fall long here on CCX. Next week will be Park Center and Wilmington Kennedy. For Joe Basil and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. Again, your final score, Providence rallies late to beat Brack 14 to 13.